Oh, it's so glad to be back. It's so glad to be back. Episode number 90 of the Minding Your Business podcast. I'm your host, Champ Ron. Glad to be with you here on a phenomenal Good Friday, uh, Friday, April the 19th, 2019. And I'm excited about uh, today's show. I'm excited to be back. Uh, Of course, the Minding Your Business podcast is brought to you by the Binge Podcast Network. Listen, what you need to do is you need to go to www.onabinge.com. That's www.onabinge.com. Make sure you subscribe. We've got great contact from great content producers uh, that is coming. Shout out to my guy, Dominic Lawson, with Owls LLC and the Startup Life Podcast, uh, my co-founder here with the Binge Podcast Network. Shout out to him for recently recording his 100th episode. Um, So we are definitely, definitely, definitely uh, very proud of our co-founder, Mr. Dominic Lawson. Uh, again, of the Startup Life podcast. Make sure that you check that out, as well as all the podcasts that are uh, within uh, the Binge Podcast Network family. We are brought to you by Legacy Living Real Estate Partners. I have rebranded my real estate uh, business, and we're able to help now sellers If you're interested in selling, if you've been impacted in your ability to sell or you need to sell quickly, uh, maybe you fell behind on payments, maybe there's a divorce, maybe there's been a death in the family, you've inherited a property that you don't want to deal with, you've got uh, ridiculous tenants that you're having to deal with and you're tired of all that garbage, uh, get with us and we will look, if it fits our needs, we'll look to buy your house. At the same time, we're helping tenant buyers. So if you're renting and you're tired of renting, you want to own, maybe you're close to ownership, but you know how it is. Qualifying for a mortgage isn't the easiest thing. You can give them all the documentation in the world and your right arm and your firstborn, and you still may be declined. And so we help you whether you've got credit uh, obstacles to overcome, whether you have maybe suffered a job loss or maybe you're new on a job, you're self-employed, you know how that can be with trying to get a mortgage. Uh, You've gone through divorce, you've um, maybe recently got married or maybe you're um, now kind of settling in and you're looking to get stable and you're just not quite mortgage ready and that's okay. Uh, We're able to help you. So go to LegacyLivingRealEstatePartners.com. That's LegacyLivingRealEstatePartners.com. Buy a home, sell a home, live a legacy. Again, episode number 90. I'm so glad to be back after missing y'all last week. Champ Ron, the Minding Your Business podcast. Let's do it. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Yes, 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 indeed. Thank you guys again so much. Glad to be back after taking uh, a week off and spending a little bit of time at a conference up in Michigan. Uh, But again, I'm glad to be back. I'm back stronger as ever. Episode number 90. We're getting close to number 100 ourselves. I talked about uh, Dominic being there, who's our big brother in podcasting, but we call him the pod father. (laughs) That's my guy, the pod father. But We are heading closer to our 100th episode, and you're going to see uh, some new graphics. You're going to hear some new intro and outro music. We've got some big things um, that we're working on, working with a great uh, graphic designer here in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, just a lot of things going. A lot of things have happened since the last time I came to you uh, from episode number 89. All kinds of of great things going on in business and the community and in sports and all around. But uh, what we want to get into today is our guest. Uh, Our guest is Tom Schwab. He's an author, speaker, teacher, and podcast interview marketing pioneer. In this noisy digital world, you can't break through the noise. You just add to it. Instead, you need to get in on the conversation where your ideal customers are already listening. As a Navy veteran who ran nuclear power plants and an inbound marketing engineer, Tom Schwab has a refreshing, unique approach. He focuses on time-proven strategy, then supercharges it with today's technology and podcast interview marketing. As an author, speaker, and teacher, Tom helps you get more traffic, leads, and raving customer fans by being interviewed on targeted podcasts. 
So you're getting ready to get a treat and some great value. I'd like to welcome Mr. Tom Schwab. Tom, are you there? I am, Ron. Thrilled to be here. Excellent. Yes, I love that energy. And we've got a live audience here on Spreaker.com. And for everybody that's listening to the reported podcast, thank you so much. And and uh, Tom, we've been waiting all week, my man. So are you ready to jump in here with the NYB community? I am. I love it. And uh, it's, I just said it's weird talking to you uh, and, and hearing you at 1x speed. I'm used to listening to you at 1.5x speed as, as I run at half x speed. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, Tom, you know, we we got a lot to get to, and I know, uh, you know, time is limited, so we want to be respectful of your time, and we thank you so much for joining. So tell us a little bit about Tom Schwab. Who is Tom Schwab, the human being? Well, I, uh, that's, a, that's always a tricky question to ask with somebody uh, with my gray hair, but, uh, you know, <laughs> as much gray hair as I have. But well, I have no hair, that, so. Well, there you go. <laughs> With that, you know, I, I started out, uh, my career was in, uh, as an engineer. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to the Naval Academy, so thank you all to the taxpayers for paying for my education. And I say that I've run a nuclear power plant and I've run a small business. And one of them was easy because it came with an instruction manual. <laughs> but uh, throughout this, uh, you know, as a small business, I've always looked at what I learned in engineering and systems and processes uh, of how to build something. And uh, really, that's what we're doing today, of how can you take the strategy and build a system around that uh, so that even if you don't understand all of the tools or if the tools are going to keep changing, if you understand why it works and how it works, I think you'll be able to take a lot of things away uh, from uh, from our discussion. And, hey, I'm calling in from Kalamazoo, Michigan. If I can do it from Kalamazoo, uh, trust me, you can do podcast interview marketing from anywhere in the world. Hey, that sounds like a good uh, kind of promo there, Tom. If you can make it in Kalamazoo, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. So how did you transition from, as a Navy veteran, uh, Tom, and one, I, I think, speaking on behalf of the MYB community, uh, we do want to thank you for your service to this country. Um, how do you, how did you, how was that transition? I mean, that seems like such a stark transition. You know, obviously, you have the leadership skills and, and things like that, but um, did you find challenges in transitioning, um, you know, out of Navy service into, I guess, civilian life and kind of getting into what you're doing today? Uh, you know, it was probably going from the Navy to the corporate world was probably easier than going from the corporate world to the entrepreneurship world. Oh, wow. Right? Because in in the military, it's, everything is structured. There's manuals. People have done it before you. So there's other people that are teaching you how to do it. And the same way in the corporate world, you know, there was a there was a training for everything. Things didn't move that quick. Um, we were we were just slowly uh, changing, not radically uh, evolving. So really, I say, you know, that uh, I learned more in my first couple of years as an entrepreneur than I did at any other time in my life, because there's so many things out there, so many people that want to help you, and also. By and large, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you're not following somebody else's tracks. You're figuring out the way to do it um, and testing things. And, you know, that's one of the things I love today is that it's never been easier to test things. And I always say, you know, I've got an opinion about my business, but it's the customers that are the experts. And today they'll tell you what they love and what they loathe. And you just have to be smart enough to do more of what they love and stop doing what they loathe. Yep, there you go, and and that's a great point, uh, Tom. Because oftentimes we talk about, uh, you know, as entrepreneurs, we feel like we're the we have to be the subject matter expert on everything. And some of that we we learn. I was talking with someone last week when I was actually in Michigan myself uh, about you know always being the subject matter expert and always uh, feeling that, particularly in the corporate world where you attach value to that, right? And so it's difficult for people transitioning from the corporate world than the entrepreneurship where your direct customer is now your boss and not just a man or a woman and men and women above them and, and so, so on and so forth. And so I think it's very critical that point that you made in terms of listening to the customer. You know, what is it that they value? You know, and what is their motivation for doing business with you and honing in on that and minimizing or, or eliminating, mitigating 
uh, like you say, what they loathe or what what creates problems or what keeps them up at night. So I think that's a phenomenal point. And it's different because so often, you know, in in our academic career, we're rewarded for being the smartest person and knowing all the answers. Or even right. sometimes in the corporate world, of you know, uh, you're the one that knows all the answers, so you're the valued one. But really, once you get into the you know running your own business, the entrepreneurial space, really the economy today, it's the person that can ask the right questions and admit that they don't know something and uh, and reach out to somebody uh, that can help them. Uh, I've always said that. Uh, uh, Learning from my own mistakes has been painful. I'd rather learn from somebody else's mistakes. <laughs> you and I both, my man. And uh, I've made enough of them. I always share with MYB community um, a lot of the follies and mistakes that I've made that hopefully people can avoid them. But, yeah, i much uh, rather learn from someone else's mistakes than my own. Uh, that's for sure. So Tom Schwab's our guest, uh, podcast interview marketing pioneer, author, speaker, and teacher. And so, you know, let's fast forward a little bit to till today, Tom. So, you know, tell me a little bit. Obviously, you, you don't have to explain to me much. I'm a, I'm a podcaster myself. But, you know, for our, our listening audience who's asking, some have asked me, you know, what is podcast interview marketing? You know, uh, that's a term that I think, uh, quite frankly, for many, it, it's fairly new. Um, although podcasting may not be. But just, you know, when you tie together interview marketing, you know, what is that? Yeah, and that's a great question. And I I think if you step back and say, well, what is marketing, right? Marketing to me is starting a conversation with someone that could be an ideal customer. So you could start that conversation with with cold calls. You could start it with a billboard. Um, you could start it with, you know, public speaking, uh, television ads, whatever. But we looked at it and one of the things we saw was that today it's getting harder and harder to break through the noise. And let's be honest, you know, uh, most of the time we're not breaking through the noise. We're just adding to the noise. So the idea was, how can we get in on the conversations that people are already listening to? So it really boils back to uh, experience we had about a dozen years ago with guest blogging, right? So when blogs were the big thing, well, you could write your own blog and put that out in front of, you know, the three or four people that were actually following your new blog. Or right. you could take that and put put it on an established site, you know, a Wall Street Journal, a Huffington Post, you know, wherever your audience was and guest blog, get in front of that audience, get that no like, and trust and drive the traffic back. And about 2014, I hypothesized, could you use podcast interviews that same way? You know, could you go to where the people were, get introduced uh, by a respected person in their community, the podcast host? You know, get a chance to tell your story, get that know, like, and trust, and use that to drive awareness and traffic back to your site. And, Ron, we started to test it. I was amazed originally. I thought, you know, this is too good to be true. We were seeing conversion rates of visitor to lead that were 25 times better than blogs. Wow. And the more we tested it, the more we refined it, we looked at it and said, no, this is this is really a system here, right? If Because you think about it, if I just come to your website or read a blog, that's pretty much cold traffic. But if I've been introduced by a friend, if I've gotten to, to talk 30, 45 minutes, something like that, that's really a warm lead, maybe even a hot lead. It's almost like, you know, uh, we're, we're together at a, at a, uh, a cookout and uh, uh, you bring me over and say, hey, this is Tom. You have to meet him. And we stand around and talk for 30 or 45 minutes. That is a that is a hot um hot traffic that is a warm hot introduction there and that's why podcast interview marketing works at its heart and why it works so well yeah absolutely and i'll add to that tom because you know obviously with the growth of podcasting over the years you know it kind of started out as a small thing and you know people were trying to distinguish it from tv and radio and then obviously the the numbers suggest that uh, that uh, uh, notion is starting to kind of turn the corner with people really understanding the power of it. You see what Spotify is doing now in, in the podcast uh, industry or, or kind of lane. You see what many companies are doing. I'm talking to companies now. I was just at a banker's conference last week, Tom, and um, we had people talking about, 
uh, setting up podcasts and establishing them, or maybe they're struggling and trying to do that. So people are recognizing, as you mentioned, the the warmness of being introduced by a friend or communicating uh, to your market uh, in a less salesy, uh, more informative type of way. Uh, so you come off as more of a um, uh, consultant and a little bit more human, uh, quite frankly, than just throwing out marketing pieces. Because you're right, the, it's noisy out here uh, with social media and with more people kind of out doing things. It, it just gets noisy. And so, yeah, I agree with you. I think it's a, a, a really you know, neat, innovative lane. There's a, a quote uh, or a tweet out there from uh, Rand Fishkin, who started a company called SEO Moz, and it's the best tweet I have ever seen. He said, the best way to sell something today is not to sell anything, but earn the awareness, respect, and trust of those who might buy. And so that's what I think people are, are finding out. You know, Nobody wants to be sold anything, but man, they want their problem solved. Yes. The best way to do that is to get in front of them and, and earn their respect, awareness, and trust. Um, and uh, that's the way to sell uh, in the modern age. Yep, definitely. And so, Tom, if I'm a business owner or an entrepreneur and I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, well, you know, how would I get involved? I see all the there's a billion and a half podcast out there. You know, how do I know which ones to get to, you know, and how do I connect with someone like yourself to help me even navigate that noise? Because some people may feel overwhelmed as to, golly, uh, you know, which podcast do I get on and, you know, what do I say and, you know, how do I get on and not sound salesy, but, you know, like you say, how do I uh, show myself as uh, just a person and gain that respect and, and that recognition? Well, it, for the record, there's not a billion podcasts yet. Right. There's only <laughs> 600,000. And people say, wow, that's, you know, it's so saturated. Well, there's like 40 million blogs. So it's yeah. just a fraction of that. Sure. And so with that, you, you bring up a good point of, well, how do you do this, right? Because just getting on a podcast um, with 600,000 of them is not hard, right? But getting on the right ones that are going to add value and really move the needle on your business that's really what the, what the, uh, the art is. And I always say, everything that we do is not magic. Uh, it's not some secret formula. Uh, no, we widely teach it. In fact, um, you had mentioned the book, uh, Podcast Guest Profits. Yeah. Um, I sell a lot of those on Amazon, but I give more away. If anybody wants a copy of that, uh, just go to interviewvalet.com forward slash MYB for Minding Your Business, and you can get a free copy there. But what we teach in there is that there's really, you know, five steps to it, right? There's the, the prospecting, finding those right shows. And what we look at is, well, does the show have the right audience? Um, do they have a website that can give you a backlink? Because the, the backlinks are so important for your search engine optimization. We teach you to look at their social media. How much are they promoting this? You know, do they have a big uh, social media following or email following they're promoting it to? And the final thing in the algorithm to look at is experience with previous guests. So if you look on there and you say, wow, they've got clients that are guests that are similar to me, chances are you would be a good guest for that. Once again, learning from other people. Yeah. So, you know, the prospecting, that is so important. The next one is the pitching, you know, reaching out to get the host to say yes. And there's a lot of best practices for that. The third one is the preparation. You know, you're, you're talking to thousands of people. Make sure you know who you're talking to. Nothing will ruin your credibility more than walking on stage saying, hello, Cleveland, when you're in Columbus. Right. <laughs> uh, so we, we go through that. Right. Finally, you know, the performance, that's the, the one thing you can't outsource, uh, but we definitely teach people the best practices in that. And then finally, we call it progression. How do you get people to move from just being a passive listener to an active visitor and engaged lead? And I'll pull behind the curtain there. You've already seen how it's done. So the best practice is to always send them to a dedicated page on your website, right? So if you go to uh, my website, you've never seen Tom Schwab, you've never seen my website, and you've uh, probably come from a mobile device. That traffic bounce.
Hey, Tom, did we lose you? I think we might... I think we might have lost Tom. We're going to get Tom right back because we want to really hear that point he was just making. So, hey, Tom, you still there? All right. Not a problem. We'll see if we can get Tom right back, everybody. Not a problem. That was Tom Schwab, uh, podcast interview marketing pioneer, author, speaker, and teacher. And, uh, when we're talking, uh, I guess, across with, from Kalamazoo, we might have uh, lost him. Tom, you still there? Oh, I hope we didn't lose Tom. Let's see. Hey, Tom. We may not be hearing you. I, I'm not sure if you might have hit the mute button. Oh, no. All right. We'll try one more time, NYB. Hang tight with me because we want to get uh, Tom back on. Hi, this is Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, this is Ron back again. We uh, I think we lost you a little bit. Might have been the connection on our end, uh, so I'm not sure, but... Um, we want to continue with the point you were making. Yeah, and so with that, you know, there's the different steps. There's the prospecting, the pitching, the preparation, uh, the performance, and then the progression. And the progression is really, can you send them back to your website? And uh, I was mentioning that you've already heard how that works. So uh, providing an, an offer, some foreign um, uh some way uh, to get them there. So we offered the book. And when you go to interviewvalet.com forward slash MYB, you'll see what a welcome page looks like, right? The first thing you're going to see is Ron's picture, uh, the artwork from the podcast, the trust seal, and then all the different ways to get in touch with me. And so we teach all of this, and it's the best practice um, in order to make the best return on investment both for your time uh, and your money. Yeah, excellent. And Tom, we thank you so much, you and your team, putting that together. I think that's phenomenal. And NYB community, I encourage you uh, to go to interviewvalet.com backslash NYB uh, to make sure that you can communicate with Tom, uh, get your copy of Podcast Guest Profits. Uh, that's by Tom. It's a, it's a great book. And uh, for those that are interested in podcast and those that are interested in podcast marketing and interview marketing, uh, you can't beat it. You need to go and, and you need to make sure that you have that information as part of your arsenal. So thank you again for that, Tom. So, Tom, for those that want to connect with you in terms of, you know, helping them along this process, what does that look like? Sure. And so we work with authors, speakers, coaches, brands. Um, we focus mostly in three verticals, business, faith and Christianity, and health, nutrition, and wellness. And, uh, you know, if you're, if any of this makes sense to you, um, let's jump on a call and we can talk about, you know, uh, could you have success with podcast interview marketing, you know, with us or without us? would love to give you a, an evaluation on that and then talk about how we might be able to help you get even better return on investment with that. So if you just go back to interviewvalet.com forward slash MYB for minding your business, uh, there's a link to my calendar there and uh, we can set up a time to talk. Yep. Excellent. And so, Tom, where do you see, you know, kind of podcast marketing going? Where do you see podcasting in general? Um, I know a lot of the statistics are pointing at an upward trend all the way around. Do you see it, uh, you know, continuing on kind of this upward trajectory or do you see it starting to flatten out? You know, what's kind of your uh, prognosis on it? Yeah, there's some people that, uh, you know, say, oh, it's a, it's a bubble, it's going to burst. Well, I go to Harvard and what they said. And Harvard University had their first um, podcast conference last fall, and they called this the golden age of podcasting. And I think they're right on that, that uh, we're just seeing the emergence of it. Still, the data says only 50% of the U.S. population listens to podcasts. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. I think what could be funny is, What's podcasting going to look like? Uh, some ways, I think the term podcasting um, 
isn't really true, right? It's more on-demand radio. I've got uh, my two youngest daughters are 19 and uh, 22. Yeah. And I asked them uh, a while back, what's what's the pod stand in po- for podcasting? And they rolled their eyes and said, I don't know, Dad. What's the pod stand for? <laughs> and the thing is, is, Ron, they've grown up in a world without iPods. They just know it as something they listen to on their phone or uh, something that uh, can be downloaded in the car. So to me, it's really on-demand radio. And I think audio has always been powerful from the, the days of Orson Welles to uh, uh, just people listening to talk radio. So I think with giving them more options, more control, you know, I can listen to you and uh, the podcast whenever I want, at whatever speed I want. And that's powerful. That's No other medium can do that. So uh, I think we're really at the golden age of podcasting. And uh, it, it's great to be part of it, either as a guest as a host or as both. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you and, and amen you on that, Tom, definitely. And so um, we did get a question uh, from one of the live audience members that w- wanted to ask about you know, monetizing in the in podcasting. So whether it's as a host or as a guest uh, or even as both, right? Uh, what What are some best practices or ways that you see people being able to monetize their efforts around podcasting? Because look, here, here was kind of the thing. When podcasting first kind of was evolving, um, you know, you had some radio shows that tried to kind of get in on it. Some people were, um, you know, kind of hard on it saying, oh, it's just amateurism and it, it's never going to really, you know, take off. And like you say, that's been disproven. Um, but then the next piece has been, okay, now how do I monetize these efforts? And so whether it's as a guest or as a host or both, you know, where do you see that going? And, and what is maybe a best practice or two for those that want to monetize? Yeah, and I think that's the, the question that everybody asks. Because it started off as sort of a, uh, a hobby, you know. People couldn't figure out how to make money on podcasts. And I think a lot of times people went to the old radio model. Well, I'll just send sell sponsorship or, you know, if I get enough downloads, um, you know, Audible will, will pay me um, to, uh, to be on the podcast. The problem is, is that, you know, the average podcast gets under 750 downloads per episode. If you get 50,000 downloads per episode, you're in the top 1%. The markets are smaller. They're segmented. And so with that, you've got to get a whole lot of downloads in order to make this make sense from a, a purely uh, purely getting paid by somebody like Audible for the number of downloads. I always say the best sponsor you have on your podcast is yourself, right? If you've got right. a brand, a product, a book, a service, boy, why would you sell that, that uh, advertisement to anybody else? I love the, uh, there's a podcast out there called Social Media Marketing Week. Um, Mike Stelzner uh, puts that podcast on. It's a advertisement for his conference that he puts out there, right? So all the people he has on there are speakers of this conference, and he always talks about, hey, if you want to learn more about them, come out to the conference. If you look at HBR IdeaCast, um, that podcast is basically a marketing arm for Harvard Business Review publication. Most everybody they have on there has authored in there. So I look at that and say, don't look at this as a standalone of how can I make money on podcasts, but how can I use podcasts, either as a guest or as a host, to grow my business? And so really make sure that you're you're promoting and use your own business as the best sponsor. You know, people ask me, uh, uh, do I do I speak for free? And I would say, no, I never speak for free. Right? I don't always get paid by the person to come in, but man, I should be there talking about my business, how I can help people. And you'll find that you get paid much, much better if you do it that way as opposed to if you're just trying to monetize a podcast by how much will Audible charge me or pay me for each download. Yeah, it's a great point because it speaks to the motivation, right, Tom? So the the motivation is, and and for me, I started this uh, podcast back August 2017, and you hit the nail on the head. For me, and and that's what it's been for me, it's been, you know, listen, I'm in banking and real estate, right? So I'm in the trust business. So I'm in the business of I've got to um, 
be affable and I've got to be able to earn trust, respect and likability for people to do business with me. And and I, I imagine that goes across industry as well. But for me, you know, what this has done is help build uh, an entire community because, um, listen, right now uh, I've got two people in Russia that are listening to me, listening to this uh, live. Now, there's no collusion. There's no ties to any of the Mueller reports or any of that. <laughs> so but um, but no, there, I mean, my number one market is kind of between San Francisco, California and Memphis, Tennessee, where, where I'm sitting right now. And so that's amazing to be able to do that from a guy, you know, that's sitting here with, you know, a microphone and, and two cell phones doing a podcast. You know, I'm not in a fancy studio. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not at some iHeartRadio deal with, you know, uh, th- this big time equipment. And so I'm able to do that and build a community. And like you said, I'm able to share um, in a, a kind of a less salesy environment just to the community, to my friends here that are all part of MYB community, um, how I can add value and what I'm doing in the community and how you can connect with me and how we can partner together. And I've been able to do that. And it's amazing how that focus, and, and even when you take that beyond to the Binge Podcast Network uh, that I have started with my, my good buddy here, uh, Dominic Lawson, and how we're building that with other podcasters, whether they're new or existing, that are uh, have great content and are looking for voices and looking to get their voice amplified and we're working to help them. So, you know, you're right. It is not just about how many advertisers we can get on this and try to make it into radio. It's how can we take that and take what we're doing on a day-to-day basis and kind of let people behind the curtain and, um, let people know exactly who we are. Cause like you said, we can't get on the phone with everybody all the time and we can't, email back and forth with everybody and we can't tweet back and forth with everybody but we can put out this great content right with folks like yourself and other people that join in and we can showcase ourselves in the right light and you know be our best advertisement with our own businesses and i think many people will find because i know I'm, I'm a living witness to this that i found you know podcasting to be tremendous uh for my business i mean as good or better than social media of just, you know, posting and tagging and liking. Um, And it's certainly much more efficient than TV, radio, print ads, all the other stuff that's traditional. Um, So I'm with you there, Tom. I think there's a great way um, to view it in terms of your motivation and and mentality. Ron, I think you're so right. There's two fundamental things there that you were talking about. The first one is that, you know, Today, it's never been easier to sell something online. You know, all you have to do is, is be a penny cheaper than the other person, and you can make that transaction. But it's never been harder to build a business. Because building a business means people have no like and trust for you. There's lifetime value. There's loyalty. There's working together in partnerships. And really, podcasting can help with that. The other fundamental thing there is, is something that I heard from Mike Maples. Mike was uh, one of the early investors in, oh, I think it was Twitter and Uber. He's a big Silicon Valley guy. He made an observation recently that we live in a world of abundance, right? It used to be that we lived in a world of scarcity. So you only had, you know, you were limited by the number of customers, like how many people lived in Memphis, right? It's not that way today anymore. You know, we live in a world of abundance, abundant choices, uh, abundant calories, and abundant customers. Right now, there's, you know, there's probably 10,000, 100,000 people that would love to be part of the Binge Network. I love what you guys are doing there. The problem is, is that if they don't know about it, if they don't know about your product or service, that right now could be perfect for them. How can they do business with you? So that's why I think that our biggest problem today is obscurity. The people that we could serve, the people that would be ideal customers, that would be thrilled to work with us, don't know we exist. And so I think that's the biggest challenge that all businesses, all services have right now, is how to break through that obscurity. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's a great uh, a great point, Tom, and it's definitely well noted. I hope NY- NYB is taking notes uh, with what we've just said because uh, I think there's a lot of power in being able to understand uh, that scarcity and going from you know scarcity to abundance 
And I think that's a great way to put it because if you understand that history and that flow, then it can help you with uh, your strategic goal planning and your execution around that. When you understand that now we're in this society of abundance, and there's, again, there's a lot of noise. And how you distinguish yourself from that is going to determine whether you have a hobby or you have a business. And I think there are a lot of hobbyists that are kind of posing as business owners because it's the sexy thing to do. Yet Shark Tank come out. Yet all the issues of oh wait, listen, Tom, I've always joked on this podcast with NYB that most of, you know of today's business owners, kind of the newer ones, these first gen business owners and entrepreneurs, are really vigilante entrepreneurs. They're folks that were, you know, they were, you know, fired or laid off or cut or whatever happened on the job, and they. Uh, swore to rid the world of evil uh, one tax ID number at a time. And, um, <laughs> I and, love that. Yeah, and, you know, w- with that, um, you know, th- there's there's a lot of tax ID numbers out here, but there's not a lot of businesses. And so there's a lot of people moonlighting. And, and listen, there's nothing wrong with any of that, um, except for, you know, taking the time to to really build and get through the noise and how do you add value and I think a great way to do that is through podcast interview marketing. And so, you know, Tom, let, let me ask you this. I always like to ask, you know, business owners this. Take us back to that day. I, I think most business owners, entrepreneurs, you know, people in, in W-2 employment, just people in general, there's this day where, you know, you, you come close to quitting. You know, you say, like in your case, maybe you say, hey, I don't know if this is going to work out. Maybe I'll go back to doing whatever I was doing before, right? Or, you know, some circumstance hits, you know, we all experience life and uh, at different levels. So if you had that day, you know, take us back to that day where you almost said, ah, I don't know about this. And, you know, what kept you going? Well, I, I, I laugh because you said day as in like singular. Yeah. Uh, I think that day, <laughs> day happens a few times a year and I think it's important to surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, there's a different mindset when you sign the front of a paycheck or when you sign the, the back of a paycheck. And uh, I've got a, a dear friend. We're both entrepreneurs. We're in a mastermind group together. And we always joke that about, you know, two or three times a year, we call each other to quit. And, uh, you know, because you can't go and complain to your wife about it. She would, uh, you know, it would cause her undue stress. You can't talk to your employees or your um, your bank about it. Uh, they would freak out. Uh, but, you know, it's usually one of those days where, um, let's see, accounts receivable um, is really late. Accounts payable uh, is huge. And, oh, by the way, uh, taxes are due that day, too. And there's that thing where you, you start to think it's like, oh, man, if I just had a regular J-O-B, uh, you know, I could take the time <laughs> off and do this and do that. And so we would call each other. And I remember uh, my friend Brian one time, uh, I called and I said, that's it. I'm going to go. I'm going to get a, a, a nine to five job. I'm going to work at the post office. Um, I'm going to show up. I'll do the minimum required. And that's it. Uh, you know, the entrepreneur life is not for me. And he laughed and he said, you wouldn't make it a week at the post office. He said, you'd be trying to fix things, improve things, optimize things, he said somebody would shoot you. And he said that the line from the uh, from Godfathers, this is the life we have chosen. And so there's a lot of, you know, there's not everything is all good, but uh, uh, there's good and there's bad in it, and you've got to choose that. And it's important on those low times to realize that it's not all you, right? And it's not always that way, you know? Um, I love the flexibility that it gives me. I love the opportunity that it gives me. Um, and I joke now that uh, you know I haven't gotten a, a, a paycheck in decades. I don't know if I'm un- if I'm even employable anymore. Uh, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not looking forward to retirement anymore. When I was a, uh, a corporate employee, um, I dreamed of retiring someday. And now I look at what I'm doing now, and it's it's. Like, I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. I can do it from anywhere. Uh, earlier this week, my wife and I uh, ran over to Chicago for two days, just on the spur of the moment. It was a nice day. Uh, we had an opportunity to stay there. Well, I still got work in while I was there. And, you know, to me, it's not that whole thing of work-life balance. I- I've never understood how to do that. To me, it's work-life integration. And this is this is what I do, and this is what I want to do uh, until uh, I'm 
physically no longer able to do it. So uh, I'm also working on my health so I can do it for many decades from now. Yep, excellent. And the health piece is definitely something to add in there at the end. Um, you know, regardless of what lane people take, is always to make sure that uh, you're in tune with your health so you can do what you love uh, for as long as you physically can. So, you know, Tom, I, I want to, as we get to the close of this interview, you know, what are, you know, just kind of overall for, for someone that's listening to the podcast and, you know, they're, you know, maybe they had a rough week or things didn't quite go the way that they, they wanted, or, you know, maybe they're just dealing with their own mindset and mentality challenge of, you know, God, I really want to do this, but, you know, I've got bills due, I've got this, 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 you know, the kids are doing this and they're, you know, my wife or my husband's doing that, you know, there, a lot of people have all this noise internally with themselves. You know, what are two or three, you know, just maybe best practices for, you know, people that are in business, people, you know, what's a good word you could give somebody that, you know, can inspire them that, you know, when they, you know, the next day when their feet hit the floor, they can be thankful and, and they can go and, and really attack life and not just be reactive to it. So, you know, what are those best practices kind of, you know, from your thoughts? I think you hit on there of thankful. And if you start with a heart of gratitude, it's really hard to have a pity party. Uh, I can remember one day um, uh, in the not too distant uh, past where it was a bad day. Ronnie, it was an awful day. You know what happened? The internet went down for like 45 minutes at my house. And I just had to take a deep breath and say, you know, a bad day for me is when the internet goes down. A bad day for my grandfather was when he had to bury a child. Yeah. And so the problems that we have here, um, you got to put them in perspective, right? Um, so the bank is knocking at your door. So you've got credit card bills, all the rest of that. We still have more opportunity than any other place. There are people all around that would trade places with us. So I think, you know, from that idea of uh, to, to much, uh, if you're grateful, more will be given to you. And so I always try to start with thankful for what um, uh, for what I have. The other thing is that uh, my college roommate went on to be a, uh, a Navy test pilot. And just uh, uh, one of the things that he said early on uh, always struck me. He said, don't die not knowing. And I've always looked at that is that um, if you want to do something, don't die not knowing if you could do it. Uh, we only have one life. This is not a practice. Uh, and now is the time to do it. So if you think about building a business, well, don't die not knowing if you could do it. If you think about, uh, you know, uh, starting to do something new, don't die not knowing if you could do it. Give it a try. And uh, I, I guess the, the third thing that I would point out is that um, as we get older, a lot of times we can become judgmental. Uh, a lot of times we can be uh, people that jump to conclusions, right? Well, I could never do this. I, I could never do that. Or that's right. That's wrong. Uh, and I have learned so much from my two grand, uh, grandchildren. They're four years old and two years old. And when I grow up, I want to be as adventurous as they are. I want to be as courageous as they are. <laughs> I want to be as curious as they are. You know, they look at everything as an opportunity, a problem to be solved. Um, you know, climbing up there uh, is an adventure. Yeah, it's scary, but they do it anyway. Uh, and so I think if we look back on that, uh, we could enjoy life a lot more and, uh, and, and really view it more as, as, as children. Uh, you know, there's, there's some special joy about that. And, uh, while they, while they fall down, uh, they never stay down. They always get back up. Uh, they smile and go on from there and they learn something from it. So, uh, I would just say, uh, to take, to, to look at that, start with a thankful heart every morning. Don't die not knowing. And, uh, if you ever get, uh, get down just take some inspiration from a kid yeah hey tom I, i'm with you all the way there and as someone who's got young daughters you're exactly right and it's funny how we lose that as we grow up i think you know most of us start as kids that way and uh, for s some strange reason we get to be adults and you know we get a little seasoned and uh we lose some of that uh you know childhood joy and and that sort of thing allowing uh different circumstances to just beat on us and uh, again you you're very you, it's it's incredible how um, just taking that very simple, just the, the, the joy of a kid 
and the joy of, of looking towards things as like you say, opportunity versus all the, you know, the, the reason something can't work or all the negatives and, and that sort of thing. And having that, that childlike heart, I think will go a long way and help a lot of people. So listen, our, our guest today has been Tom Schwab. He's author, speaker, teacher, podcast interview, marketing pioneer. Uh, you need to go to interviewvalet.com forward slash NYB. That's interviewvalet.com forward slash NYB to connect with Tom and his great company, uh, to learn more about how you can get your hands on his book, Podcast Guest Profits, uh, and just learn more uh, about what's going on in podcast interview marketing. Uh, Listen, take it from me. You need to add that to your repertoire. If you're looking to promote and kind of build your business, whether you're a startup or you've been in business 200 years, you need to be innovative and you need to be able to connect. So listen, you're either going to tell people that you're in business or you're going to tell people you're going out of business. So NYB, which one do you want to tell people? But in either one, you're going to advertise and you're going to promote and you're going to market. So which one do you want to do? All right, Tom, listen, thank you so, so much. I know you're busy. It's a Friday. It's good Friday, by the way. Um, so definitely, um, you know, best wishes to you, to your family for uh, the rest of today, next week, next month, the rest of this year. Uh, I want to continue to be connected and uh, be a resource. Uh, so if I can do that, uh, definitely want to make myself available. Thank you so much. I have learned today. I'm, I feel like I'm better uh, from this interview. I feel like NYB community is better from this. And uh, I look forward to people connecting with you. Well, thank you, Ron. And the next time I am in Memphis, we got to get together at Rendezvous Ribs. There you go. Hey, barbecue's on me, my man. <laughs> yeah, so definitely. I got you covered there, Tom. Thank you so much again, and we'll talk soon. All right, Tom. I'll talk to you later, Tom. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Excellent. Bye-bye. So that was Tom Schwab, uh, author, speaker, teacher, podcast, interview, marketing pioneer uh, that was joining here on the Minding Your Business podcast. And, you know, you heard a lot of really good nuggets uh, from Tom uh, from someone that's in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Now, I tell you, all it's cold as hell in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I was just there last week, five uh, inches of snow in Traverse City. So I can tell you this time of the year is no joke. But I love Michigan. I love it. It's a great state. Uh, a lot of uh, great commerce is going on up there. And you heard Tom speak on it. You know, podcasting is not going away. And you, you need to go ahead and get on it early. You know, today's not these aren't the times where you can be overly pessimistic and get on trains late. You know, you may not be the type of person that likes to get on everything super early, but you, you can't wait until the trains left the station. Yeah, with everything. You you could do that when there was scarcity, like Tom said. When there's abundance, you gotta be because there's a lot of noise and you gotta be able to get on the train and you're gonna have to take a little bit of risk. You know, you take a risk every day going to work. Most of y'all work in right to work states, right? Where you can cut an employer at any time and they can cut you at any time. So you take a risk every day. Get up getting up, getting into traffic, going to work, that's a risk. You know, most of y'all don't work for union protected unions anymore, right? So don't be afraid to to go and and, and take that risk. I was talking to somebody this week about um, she didn't want to buy a house; she wanted to wait a year. Well, what what's a year gonna do? If, if you're afraid today, if you don't change anything, you're gonna be afraid in a year. Let's go ahead and, and make something happen. You now, what what's the worst that can happen? Oh well, my husband may leave, my wife may leave you. They may leave you anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, well, they may take the kids with her. They may try to do that anyway. Right? So, like Tom said in his best practice, you know, don't leave here not knowing. It's better to know than to just not know and regret. If you go to some of the nursing homes and HUD housing and things like that, you talk to senior people. Gary V talks about this. Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, about senior people. A lot of times they talk about regret. I wish I had done that. You man, I I really could have done this, but I I didn't. And and you don't want to have those regrets. Listen, you're not going to be young forever, right? Just like you know, you're not a baby anymore. You're grown. You're not going to be young forever. So, 
don't leave here not knowing. I love that quote. So thank you to Tom Schwab and uh, his entire company there with Interview Valet. Again, go to interviewvalet.com forward slash MYB. It'll be in the show notes. Uh, now it's time for Ron's Rundown. Okay, so um, there is so much. I didn't come with anything specific today because there's so much going on in the news. You got the Mueller report stuff. You've got the NBA playoffs here locally. You've got um, many different things going on here in Memphis. I mean, it's even too many things to list. Um, some great things, some not so great things. Um, you've got Maddie Johnson last week, you know, leaving the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, you've got coaching changes. You got coaching hirings. Um, you've got CEOs like the CEO of Best Buy resigning. You've got all sorts of different things. There's a, there's a like we talked about with Tom. There's just a lot of things going on. This is because we we're overloaded with so much information. Here's the here's what I want to leave you with this week from the rundown. With all this information, um, it can be very difficult to uh, maintain focus. One of the things that I try to do uh, to maintain focus is you just got to take a step and, and take a deep breath. You can't follow every little trend, every little hashtag, every little thing. Sometimes you're going to have to take a break from social media. And I know that's difficult. A lot of people say that, but it's difficult for people to become so ingrained into our culture, into a lot of our daily lives. Um, you know, Some of you sleep with the phone. The phone lay right next to you like a person. Uh, hell, it might as well. I mean, you know, you spent a thousand dollars. Yeah, the new Galaxy phone that's coming out that's gonna be two thousand dollars. Now think about that—a a phone that's gonna cost you two thousand dollars that you go walk around with, folds out into a tablet and all that type thing. So we're so ingrained with this stuff that it, it becomes so noisy and it's such a way of life for us that we, we can get overwhelmed with all the the information. And so you you got to take a step back and kind of simplify your life. And so you're not going to be able to do anything about any of this stuff that's out here, right? These news stories, um, you know, you still have the things coming out with Nipsey Hussle and and all that. You're not going to be able to do much about any of that. Um, What you can do is hone in and focus on the goals that you set out to, to accomplish this year. You know, you started out last year, the end of 2018 with your goals. Where are you with those? We're past the halfway point of April already. We're marching fast <laughs> towards May, which is crazy. I mean, think about that. The year just started and now we're coming up on May. So time keeps moving. You know, it's like a clock in, in sport, you know, in sports, it stops. But the clock in life just keeps moving. There's no stopping the clock. So the clock rolls. And so, you know, keep your focus this week. You know, don't lose focus. Don't get sidetracked by uh, a lot of the noise and the hoopla and things like that. You set a goal. You've got the talent and the ability to accomplish it. You've got the resources. Things may not always be uh, sunny and, and that sort of thing, but you got this. You've experienced, you know, many of y'all have experienced and overcome way worse than what you're dealing with right now. And like Tom said, there are other people who would love to trade spots with you. They'd love to switch chairs with you in a heartbeat. Whatever you think your worst is, let me be the first to tell you. Uh, There's many people that go through much worse, whether it's with themselves, with their family, with their friends, with their community, with their children, whatever that is. Okay, so make sure that you are remaining focused, remaining steadfast. Remain positive, right? And then don't be on the island. Surround yourself with the right type of people. Listen, I try not to be the smartest person in the room, and I try not to even be the most positive in the room. You got to be around people that elevate you. If you're still sitting around the same old people, same old negative people, same old pessimistic, fearful to be successful, all they want to do is um, go do this one thing and then, Uh, go and entertain themselves the rest of the time you got to get around away from those type of people doesn't mean you can't love them from a distance but 
If you're going to level up, then level up. You can't level up by staying the same. Okay? If nothing changes, nothing changes. It's like what they say. So, anyway, Champ Ron, this is the Minding Your Business Podcast. Thank you so much for listening here to episode number 90. You can check us out at www.themybpodcast.com. Uh, you can subscribe, like, listen on all the various podcast channels and platforms, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, all those places. But the best thing to do is just go to the website, www.themybpodcast.com. You can get completely plugged in. Don't forget www.onabinge.com for the Binge Podcast Network. We got a $100 Visa gift card giveaway. That's right, a $100 Visa gift card giveaway. No spam, no BS on our uh, mailing list. And you want to do that so that you can get access to exclusive content from the Binge as well as uh, notification and information when new episodes from our various shows as we grow uh, even the number of shows as we're looking to do. Uh, you want to be able to remain connected and informed, okay? So that's what that's about, and uh, that contest is running now through April the 27th. So make sure you go to onabinge.com, subscribe just simply with your email, and uh, we love to be able to remain connected with you. Champ Ron, the Minding Your Business podcast, episode 90 back, is now back, in back, the back, books. Back, back. I want to thank uh, everybody that has subscribed and downloaded, shared the podcast. Uh, We've got much more to come, much more content. I've got um, hopefully to land a really special guest here uh, in the next few episodes that uh, you're really going to want to hear from. Just trust me on that. But entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news, there's no business like minding your own. Listen, have a great weekend if you celebrate the Easter holiday. Um, definitely enjoy that with family and friends. If you don't celebrate it, still enjoy it with family and friends. Okay? Go make someone great. <laughs>